Welcome in, boys. Another day, Ooh. another time to talk, talk with the boys. Curtis, as you can see, has been filled in by a Ninja Turtle beanbag and Donkey Kong, but he will be here at some point. We'll jump in here. So I, I reached out to some people and I was like, all right, what would be like a good, what's like some fun topics? I like to reach out to other people besides our brains. And people are like, well, I mean, I don't know why you don't talk about this. You guys have had a show for a decade. You've been game hunting for a decade. What are some of the best moments of the show? And I was like, oh, it just seems so like fan servicey. And he's like, yeah, people want to hear that stuff. And I'm like, okay, let's dive deep to some of our favorite stories. I feel free to ask questions. You and uh, as a recent joiner of the channel, how long do you think you've been on the channel on Pixel Game Squad? What would you say? Maybe a year and a half. Okay. Year, year and a half. That's weird. I actually was telling Couple my therapist I haven't liked the last year and a half of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm like the thorn in your side. Yeah, no, actually, you're absolutely fantastic. Well, uh, great addition to the show, I may thank say, you. as well. Um, Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. Let's start with Ricky. Oh. Ricky, you and I, about almost 11 years ago is now, in 2012, in October, uploaded our first video on YouTube. It's crazy. Remember? Hands in the pockets, on the side, a little awkward. Hey, everybody, I'm Aaron. And I'm Ricky. And today we're at the Orange County Swap Mint looking for Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, Nintendo games, anything Nintendo related. Wish us luck on our first episode of the NES Pursuit. The NES Pursuit. That was it. <laughs> Isn't it weird I remember that? That's awesome. It, it was fun. Ricky. How, how old were you guys? Oh, guys. So that's what, 11-ish years ago now. I'm 38 now, so probably like 26. 26. Oh, give me those years back, please. <laughs> and I've seen those videos. Of course, we all have. I mean, you guys look great now, but you looked like young boys nah, almost. Come like on. You was, look like young kids. We yeah. were, technically. I mean, yeah. 26. It's funny now that I'm older. I feel like that's a very young. That's young. It's young. Yeah. 26. Oh my yeah. god, I feel so old. <laughs> we're, all, we're, we're, we're all in that range now, okay? Just wait until you get to the 40s, bro. Uh, oh, Why you gotta say gosh. that, bro? I know, we're close. We're you close. guys haven't cracked that we're egg close. yet, huh? We're close yeah. to cracking. You're 40. 40 already, right? I'm 42. Oh, you know how it is. Yeah, well, I do I, know how At it least is. you're in shape. I, like, blew my back out. You have a shape. Gym. <laughs> <laughs> a what? You have a shape, too. Well, like, uh, like a challenge set. <laughs> I don't know if you're a big square. I'd say Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky, let, let's go back. What are some we've done so much on the show from every state you can think of to meeting different people? What are some of your what are what is one of your favorite moments of doing this as long as we've done it? Oh man, I mean, there's a lot of them, but one I'm pretty bummed we didn't get to film. It literally just happened. Was that last year? This year when we went with Rick to to Arkansas. Which which part? All right, so this was. Uh, oh God, the the bad part is. We we filmed this, but we did we're not making a video on it. This is one of my oh, favorite ooh, things Ricky's, that ever happened. Ricky's going a little little deep cut. So I'm, this is a I'm going deep because this is stuff like you guys did not see that I wish you would have saw because it was amazing. Tell them what happened. We did never uh, tell the story, so I, I actually think it's very interesting for people, even if they don't watch the show in any way, shape, or form, because nobody saw this. Yeah, no one saw this. Tell so them. we were just uh, we we're yard sailing with Rick. We're like, hey, let's just give it a shot. We started driving around all of Arkansas and. I can't remember who spotted the the yard saw. I think it was Riff because they, they they both kind of fight. Who, I, who I did? yelled, back <laughs> up. There's a yard sale. Rick drove past it, and I was like, "Go, whoa, whoa! We're in the middle of Arkansas, and there's a yard sale. Back up." <laughs> so so we get to this yard sale. They actually have cool stuff. They have like a, a ton of like uh, uh, the Happy Meal toys, yeah. like a ton of that. Some of the vintage toys. They, they were kind of like in rough shape, but they were still cool to collect. And uh, somehow. What, was it Rick? Rick was wearing a NASCAR shirt, and they're like, "Oh, you guys like NASCAR, huh?" And he's, we're like, "Yeah, yeah, we love NASCAR." And this dude's like, "All right, come in." He 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 kept, he called Riff, uh, Riff into his room, which was a which little, was a little sketchy. Weird. Wow, a little because little we're in the sketchy. middle of Arkansas, in the middle of, and I'm talking like <laughs> what you think of when you think of the nowhere part of Arkansas. Like nobody's around. Guys, like come in my house, you know. And I'm like, Ricky. I literally told Ricky and Rick. I just kind of looked at him like. I'm just gonna trust, bro. And I went in there, and you know they're probably out there sitting out there, like, is Riff getting killed? Is something good going on? But immediately, and I'll let you finish the story. But I'll jump into where I was. Arkansas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Arkansas Chainsaw. I like the Arkansas Massacre. <laughs> Arkansas. Um, I walk in, and I immediately see, you know, validation that this guy's legit. Because when he told Rick, he's like, "You're in a NASCAR suite. I was a NASCAR driver." And you never know if it's just some old man telling yeah. stories. You know. It's fun to do when you're older, kind of shoot the beans with people. I'm a NASCAR guy. I knew this guy. I knew Dale Earnhardt, this and that. And the minute I walk in, I just see his room is filled with pictures of him. NASCAR hugging Dale Earnhardt, holding trophies, finish line. So I'm like, okay, 
this guy's legit. And then Ricky, you can keep with the story going. I come out and basically talk to them. And then what happens from there? Yeah. So he comes out. He's like, dude, you guys got to come check this out. But truth be told, there was a ton of cool stuff outside. That's why me and Rick didn't go in there. He had like Ghostbuster toys and all that stuff. But we walk into his, his place. He's, he's kind of showing us around. He's, the reason we really went in there was because he said he had this Michael Jordan rookie card that he really wanted to sell us. And we're like, dude, yeah, we'll check it out. Whatever, whatever you got. Let's go look for it. So he's looking through his drawers, looking for this. And he's like, oh, he, he pulls out this red underwear. And he's like, he's like, hey, you guys in wrestling? I'm, we're like, heck yeah. Pulls out uh, <laughs> Rick Flair. Rick Flair's underwear, ring worn underwear, or underwear costume. Suit, whatever, yeah, suit, they yeah. wear. So he pulled one out. Not only did he pull one out, he pulled out, pulled out a second one. And he's like, yeah, well, my, my wife got these when we used to work at the, I think it was. The South, wrestling ring, South Carolina. South Carolina wrestling ring. So <laughs> apparently the story was that some of the wrestlers puked in like where, where, where the, where the, ah, where, the they dressing say, rooms. where the dressing room. So neither one of them wanted to go. And in the end, she ended up going. And when she went to clean up the dressing room, apparently these got left behind. So she just grabbed them and... Kept them. That's unbelievable. They were basically like janitorial service. They everyone is barfing. I'm sure they're out partying and you drink a bunch of booze. I mean, we know Ric Flair and them go crazy. Yeah. You go crazy, you wrestle, you shake your body up. The show ends, you puke everywhere, you bail in a hurry. They called people in. Janitorial come. Nobody wanted to come. Teresa is her name. <laughs> she went and she's like, he left his shorts behind that he wore in the ring. And what's cool is the stories they told us. I mean, for sure, we're clothing guys, 100% guaranteed, 100% vintage, 100% authentic. Again, we can't authenticate the story, but all the dates they told us, the times, the location, we went and Googled everything. South Carolina, that year, he was there, he wrestled, like everything added up. And such a good story. Why would you like even lie about that? No, yeah. they don't even know. We couldn't have been, we couldn't have been, we could have cared less about wrestling, right? Right. And they, they would have still told us. So for them to tell us and us sitting there like, Oh my gosh. Craziest part was they offered us very low money that they wanted for him. We ended up giving them, you know, basically a hundred bucks each. They yeah. thought that was even too much, but that's what we paid. But we know what they'd be worth to get them authenticated and put out there. I know people will put out those same. It's the red shorts with the RF on them, getting those, you know, authenticated and sold. I mean, I see what fake stuff sells for signed by Ric Flair. That's like a repop. Of something, and were they just in like a regular underwear drawer, like yeah. with his underwear? He, he just had him in an underwear. All his he had like, <laughs> just like his regular underwear. He had ran, random collectibles. Do you think he would wear them at one times? I wonder if he wore them. He's too dude. big. He was too yeah, big. Yeah, he was too big. These were these are tiny, dude. They're, they're tiny. Like, tiny. They're made to like. But I've actually seen them. They're kind of like the high waist. They're yeah, very like high waist. So over your belly button. Out there, only my wife has it. There is a picture of me. <laughs> Did you put them on? Shirtless, <laughs> with no underwear on underneath. I put them on raw, dude. <laughs> Hundred percent. Did they fit? They fit. They did. They were. He they was were, in good shape. They were the snug. Yeah, though. he was skinny back then. They yeah. were snug. I will say they are much smaller than you would think. I'm not a big guy by any means. I mean, I'm tall, but I'm you know I'm one seventy or so. They were a little snug when I put up there. And the interesting about them, they're not very stretchy. You know, they're old school, right? Things were a lot like if you look at old baseball stuff. It's a lot of like pretty. It, there's not a lot of flex within it. Did it and it held everything together. <laughs> Everything held together. <laughs> you can definitely 100% tell they're vintage. From tag to look weird, old, like not even like a real tag, but like cloth material, you oh. know. Because well, um, I've always wondered, I've watched wrestling my whole life, like what the material of that is made. Because there's never any like, like a thick like, linen. Things never go wrong in, in it, the ring. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they seem to hold everything. That's why. Well. They're not thin. They're almost like made to make sure that your family jewels don't pop out because they know you're doing act. There's no way once you put those on that nothing's moving yeah not even a, 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 <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> locked in place do you smell it 100 percent smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ask, yeah. I, I guess he smell it <laughs> yep. he wants that whoa <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I, I examined them and definitely. <laughs> let's go, Rick. Chris liked that a lot. Really Dude, I, I love that. Rick Flair. I love the. <laughs> I examined them before I put them on, and there was definitely questionable stains. And I was like, eh, like, yeah, whatever. It's whatever. I'm never gonna be able to say I wore, wore Ric Flair's underwear. And of course, you don't wash them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, you don't no, want to no. wash. It doesn't them. matter. Everything there no. works. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yep. It, what, it's interesting too. The guy that did it. His name was Flying Clyde. 
he had like his own t-shirts of NASCAR back in the day where you could see he was like sponsored by Pizza Hut and stuff like that. But what was really cool for us, and it was like a very unexpected thing, it was very emotional because you could tell his family, he had been retired from it for so long that everyone's been there, heard that with dad telling, you know, old grandpa telling the same stories over and over. So when he told us, we were super excited. We're like, oh my, that is great. Oh, I can't, you could, dude, he started to tear up. You could tell it's like, he hasn't told this story in 30 years and seen people excited to hear the story. So it was really cool. Rick, like, you know, Rick gave him some money to go to dinner. Like, you know, they weren't living large. We, you know, we, I think we even like prayed for him and like really just had like a fun, I think he wasn't in good health at all. A really cool experience where we walked away and feeling like, man, I feel like they were really blessed by that. And not even saying we did anything to bless them, but I mean, it just felt like, like a, a situation that I know made him feel like, you know, maybe somewhat like honored for his name again, because I can't imagine, you know, you tell the same story, middle of Arkansas, your cousins heard it, your wife's heard it, everybody's heard it. They've lived, been there, done that, but now you're getting to tell it with new life again. Well, you know, it also brings up something I think about, like I go to a lot of estate sales where there's a lot of collectibles mm. and of course, you know, people die, they yeah. pass away yeah. and there's all these collectibles in people's homes and maybe this guy, how old was he? Would you say? 60s? Late 60s? 60s. Late but maybe 60s, not good but health, late but like 60s, on but his not, last. Yeah. He was having, you can always so have he breathing. Was probably just so excited to like, see people that were interested in the stuff that he was interested in. Probably half his family, and like my family's not interested in the stuff that I like to collect yeah. either. And I've always thought about that when I pass, like what's gonna happen with this stuff, yeah. you yeah. know? So to see you guys interested was probably like, uh, oh my gosh, people, there's other people that care about this too. You know? I think now that I think about him and Teresa, his wife, were both tearing up, yeah. telling the story. They were both. And I was like, this is so cool. Like it was, it was, it was a, if anything, I would say it was a blessing for us, you know, to walk away with that, not just like, obviously finding like one of the craziest items we could possibly find, but like middle of Arkansas, middle of nowhere. There is some footage of it out there. We'll be honest. We were kind of doing like the low key film, but I didn't feel right after talking. Like I'm not trying to post this man struggling to breathe in his room, you know, no shirt on. Like, oh, he was in really poor health then. Yeah, yeah. He was breathing hard and I didn't want to get like, I didn't feel comfortable enough to put it out, even though we could have click baited the heck out of it and got views, you know, but I was like, it's not worth it. So, and I, I think those are the kind of stories. It doesn't, it doesn't work filming. Yeah, they're more worth it to be told. It would not feel the same right. for you. Yeah. Told. I would have felt sleazy. Yeah. Right. What about you? I'm curious, Gabble. What are your? So you were uh, a fan of the show, then became I, a big I part so, of the show. I got a lot, man. Well, we don't have time for a lot. Give yeah, me your favorite I, story I, I of go, Pixel Game Squad. I'm gonna say two. Okay. But I promise, quick. <laughs> It's not the rules, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so many, but I will say one that I really always remember and start laughing is when when you broke your rib. Oh, in Phoenix. yeah. That was a good one. And, and that's the same one. He lost his, his, uh, watch. My his watch. watch. We'll tell Chris the story in a minute. Is this yeah. the skateboarding one? Have I heard this? No, no it's no. a great one. Okay. It's because I was brand new. I think that was my yeah early days. That, yeah, that that was my first uh, event with you guys, and when that happened, I was like, "Uh oh, what I'm what what I'm doing? What I just get into? Yeah, what am I doing here with these yeah. boys?" And and the other one is is brand new, and yeah, I have to tell this is when you called me a couple of months back and told me about SoCal. Oh. Believe it or not. I, I didn't tell you. I think I told somebody, but I started crying. You you can you can go back to the voice message. And it was it was special for me because I felt so happy for you guys. Yeah. That coming from I it, I remember I was in a Lake Los Angeles without reception. I think I remember that. Yeah, and you called me. I think I was trying like, to tell you and you're yeah, like you you called me and I was like, call from Rifo. Probably he's gonna be saying like, why you say something like, because receiving a call from you is rare because you're always busy. We're, 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 we, we talk on busy. We talk on voice messages. Yeah. We talk make, a lot in voice make messages. Make that clear. We talk all day, but on Damn. voice messages. <laughs> this guy's guy acting like I don't call you. Jeez. <laughs> it's like you never. Call. Yeah, but it's rare yeah. because we Rough always busy. actual call. Yes. It's not only you. It's the same with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's rare for us to call each other. Yeah. Unless it's something. Super important. Yeah, super important. So so I remember you calling me and, and the calls drop. Yeah. And then I call you. And then it drops again. Yep. 
and you was like, oh, I have to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I was like, uh-oh, what happened? And and the call drops again. And then you call me. Yeah. And it drops. But then you start testing me. Voice message. And I was so... Which is how we normally communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it I drops. Was, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I was so happy because I everything started like going back and remember that first episode yeah. and remember when you guys start and and all the journey yeah and yeah i mean i will say so far that's that it has to be my favorite one that's awesome what a good good no seriously no i i agree it's it's hey it's right behind you too as you speak that not not unintentionally <laughs> wow, but what uh, a promo pay <laughs> <laughs> <Baby>, me <nah, nah. laughs> got to do what we got to no, do but, yeah, I told that story to somebody. Was you that I told you? I think so. I was start crying like a little baby. And yeah, I got emotional about it too. I mean, behind yeah, the scenes, like, I did too. Because this is like our baby. Yeah. Like, SoCal game hunting is our baby. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Hundred percent. And the it, the expo will bring it to real life too. And yeah. we're excited for it now. Wait till the show actually. Even happens. like the, us last night, all talking. I'm calling all the people today. Like, hey, what do you want to talking we, to Gabo? We receiving message from Gabo. We put we put Gabo in some roles. Gabo's gonna have some important roles too. So be ready, people. We yeah, told him last you're, night. You were part, part of the discussion. Hundred percent bodyguard. No, I, I've, been, I've been the spokesman. And yeah. it'll be I, well. We'll have seven, eight months of planning this. So it's yeah. gonna be a lot of work and excitement and everything. And then it's like an accumulation of like when the event happens happens yeah. it's unbelievable because yeah. i've been doing it with retro world of course for years now so yeah i'm beyond excited for socal yeah. so mm -hmm. i was I, well a little quick i was thinking you was going to tell me that you guys bought a store uh, and that was for me that was like, oh, okay cool yeah it makes cool. sense but yeah when you told me about socal i was so emotional heck yeah bro. it was so awesome i love that because that who better cool. who better than you guys not Chris I, alone. I, I was, <laughs> well, well, that's what I thought when I, you know, I'm well, just like kidding. bringing you, you guys. You would have done great even if we didn't come along. But yes, well, I mean, it all made sense. It was we, the timing of us meeting and yeah. you know everything. Yeah. It just made. I will say, sense. who better than us? Because I, I will include myself there. Because yeah, you're, help. you're you're part of it. This whole and squad and, and yeah, so. everybody that you see on the show is a hundred percent, and and people in the community are a hundred percent a part of this. All right, I'll tell a quick story though, yes. just to jump in on it while we're reminiscing. But and I probably told this story before, but you guys said you made your first video in 2012. I opened my second store in Connecticut in 2013, and at the time, Russ Lyman was my manager of the I store, remember. who's also a good friend. Really? You guys know Russ? Yep. Yeah, Russ worked for me. Russ is awesome. For years, yeah. And he was manager of that. He was the first manager of that store. Well, when it was just myself and Russ and we're building out the store, he's, we had a TV that we put up on the wall. And he started it. He used to play you guys all the time. So you so would have only cool. been a year into it. And I, Russ and I just used to watch you guys all the time. And I don't think he knew you guys at that point. We just would watch. And again, you were the young yeah, kids yes. at that time. But, <laughs> yeah. and, That's so cool. And so to, to like come full circle 10 years later and then to be doing an expo. With it's almost you, unbelievable. It's really kind of, it, it, it is. And I, in my mind, I think about it, I'm like, that is so weird how that, it's all transpired. Because I'm 3,000 miles away on the other side of He's the country. He's guts country. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is, is like this, a God's plan. It's almost right. like we couldn't have made this happen if we wanted to make it happen. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Just sit down. And think about it. Yeah. Oh, I do. Think about it. I do. And and, and and other thing that make me so happy is what I always the only one that like it and, and laugh is Ricky. <laughs> but I always <laughs> telling you about my role in all of this. What, I, I, I want to make it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Wait, well, you want to make it what? <laughs> well, I would like I I I want to help, and I would like to be the yeah, best. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are. You're a you are. No, I mean the, the so-called to be the best one. Yeah. Okay. No, not talking bad I be, about I better the tell part of the story so we're still on topic on hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost 20 minutes deep in this one. Oh, uh, so for me, biggest for sure moment in the show, I think as far as like what the community gathered towards was when we found – or went into the warehouse with all the sealed oh, games. Oh, yeah. That was probably one of the biggest conversations. If anybody doesn't know, we went to a warehouse Bobby? full of sealed oh. games. It's almost like as if Toys R Us shut down in like the early 2000s with all their stock in the back and then just left it there. But I want to jump in and say there's one that's still more important to me to this day, and that was Archons. 
That was the best oh, moment in the show. That was great. Uh, true. Our buddy Archon, who we know now, uh, Art of Nintendo Power, does some of the coolest stuff on the internet in the world of video games as far as us being paper people and preserving art and stuff like that. Um, basically, I met him on an airplane. He to started telling me- He was flying to Portland. We were flying to Portland. He comes and tells me that he was a big old fan of the show and it was super important. And he tells me, you know, his wife is a huge fan, but she's struggling with cancer and that she wanted to meet us before she passes. Sadly, we didn't get to meet her before she passed, but we still got to go to his house like pretty much after that. And it was just a really like emotional feeling video being there, knowing that like his wife isn't there anymore. And we kind of got to dedicate the video to her and kind of like talk to her in a way, you know, while we we're there on video and the video. And I feel like it was just such a like, uh, we've always been goofy on camera because that's who we are. But I feel like it gave the show a little more importance to us, like even as people just like, wow, this is so much more important then we realize sometimes not putting it on us, but like these things can be so important to people like even us. We don't realize, you know, I'm sure American pickers don't realize that when we're having fights with our family and real things are going on, sometimes we'll watch to escape that stuff, you know? So for us, it kind of got to like cent, you know, cement for us in our brains, like, whoa, like this, sometimes people will watch this in much more important reasons than we think you know, to get them through something, to help them kind of forget. I know you, the same thing with your family members as well, watched our show. And, you know, it was just a really, like, a humbling part of the show for us. Go beyond that, the games. Yeah, that's an important thing. And I've realized that even with the stores and, and with the expo over the years that I've done, it's like a spiritual reason for what you're doing. Yeah. It's beyond just like, okay, I sell video games. Like, what's the totally. reason I'm doing it? And the, I get that same satisfaction when people come in and go, oh my gosh, this is my childhood and it brings them back. You could see it. They're, you can see it. See it. And I've realized that's my gift back is that. Yep. And the expo is that too. Like, you're creating an amazing memories and in, in time for people that's yep. like, they're going to have with them for the rest of their lives that's a spiritual thing you're doing for the good of people so yep it's good that you have that okay.